Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at functions. We'll be looking to determine if a relation is a function, find the value of a function, find the domain of a function, and identify the graph of a function. Let's get started. All right, here I have an example of a relation. And here I have a set X. So I have a group of things. And I'm going to show a relationship with set Y, another group of things. And in this case, I'm going to do people with birthdays. Now, in this set X, if I look at each individual thing, okay, that's called an element. So one, two, three, four, I have four elements here. And likewise, I have four elements in Y. So for this to be a relation, let's look at our definition. Each element in X associates with an element in Y exactly once. So if I wanted to match up the people with their birthdays, I would say Ricky is May 16th, Carmel is July 27th, Josie is March 1st, uh, 31st, and Rihanna is February 25th. Now notice that each person only goes to one birthday and that kind of makes sense. If Rihanna went to both February 25th and July 27th, that wouldn't make sense, would it? Um, now normally, you just have numbers in there, so you, you don't usually get to think about it like that. But this kind of shows you why this is a relation and this wouldn't. It doesn't make sense. Let us go ahead and dig a little deeper into this. All right, let's look at different names that they can use. Here, they can also call this your domain, your pre-image, or your X. Here, they can call this your range, image, or simply just your value of your X's. Okay, each one of these would be an element X. I can also use ordered pairs to represent this information. I can say that Ricky is May 16th, Carmel is July 27th, Josie is March 31st, and Rihanna is February 25th as ordered pairs and you say that this is one set. And once again you notice that my elements of X do not repeat. So this, even if you only had this information, you know that this is a function. If any of the X is repeated then it's not a function. And it would be okay for the Y's to repeat. Okay, using the birthdays Let's say that Ricky wasn't born on May 16th. Let's say he was also born on February 25th. And that should make sense. Can two people have the same birthday? Yeah, okay. So this does work and does make sense. This is a function. All right, take a look at these three relations. Pause the video and let me know if they are functions or not. I'm going to show you the answers in three, two, one. Here are your answers. Remember, the important thing is that the X coordinate does not repeat. I hope you got them right. All right, here I have an equation written in function notation. This lets you know that whatever I have here is a function. Okay, and you know that from knowing what the graph looks like. Now, by writing it like this, instead of Y equals 2x squared minus 3x, it lets you know, hey, this is a function already, and we can treat it now exactly the same as before. So here I'm asking you for, oh, and the way you read it is f of x is equal to whatever. So here they want us to find out how much is f of 3. All I have to do here is substitute this 3 inside the x. So here this would be 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3. Okay, and I know that's 2 times 9 minus 9. So 18 minus 9 is 9. All right. I know, so that's my answer. F of 3 is equal to 9. Now, they can also ask you more obscure things. Like, they can say, how much is F of X plus F of 3? Well, just do exactly what it says. F of X, you know what it is. They gave it to you. It's 2X squared minus 3X plus f of 3. 
you already know how much f of 3 is, it's 9. And look, there's nothing for me to simplify, there's nothing for me to do. What about this one? They want to know f of negative x. So, in here, in my original, I just substitute a negative x wherever I see an x. And let's see, remember, anything squared is going to give you a positive number. So, this is just 2 times x minus, well look, this is a negative 3 times a negative x. So, that's plus 3. Oh, forgot my squared. All right, there. So, this is my answer for f of negative x. Let's look at 3 more. And by 3 more, actually, I meant 2 more. All right. Here, they're asking us for negative f of x. So notice that my x actually stays the same. It's the outside that gets a negative. So it looks like this, negative, and now my f of x, which is this. So 2x squared minus 3x. I'm going to distribute this negative. So this is negative 2x squared plus 3x. And that's my answer here. And here, this is what I put inside. So 2x plus 3 squared minus 3 times x plus 3. Alright, here I'm going to use the shortcut that I know. It's x squared plus 6x plus 9. And distributing that minus 3, I get minus 3x minus 9. Got to distribute the 2. So 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. Left that alone. Minus 3x minus 9. And I'll collect like terms. I only have 1x squared. So 2x squared. Uh, I have an x here and x here. So that's plus 9x. And two constants plus 9. Okay, so this is my final answer for this. Now, I want you to notice that negative f of x is not the same as f of negative x. Okay, if you go back and look at the answer, you'll see that they're not the same. And likewise, f x plus 3 is not the same as f of x plus f of 3, okay? There's still different problems, so you have to work them out separately. Your turn. Here are eight questions rolled into one, so pause the video and take your time. I'll show you the answers in five, four, three, two, one. All right, here are your answers. I hope you got them right. All right, now we'll be looking at domain. The domain is the largest set of real numbers for which the value f of x is a real number. Now, so you're talking about the x's, all right? Here, I have f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x. There's no restrictions here. You can choose your x's to be anything you want. So here, your domain is all real numbers. Look at this one. This is g of x. If you look at this one, it has a denominator. Denominators can never, ever be zero, okay? Because uh, then you, you make that undefined. So since this cannot be equal to zero, we got to see what happens here. Normally, you would say all real numbers, okay? But you want to find out what happens here. So you want to see when x squared minus 4 is equal to zero. So essentially what we're going to say is our domain is all real numbers except when this happens. So let's see when this happens. Plus 4 plus 4. X squared is equal to 4. Square root on both sides. And X is equal to positive and minus 2. Okay. So notice that if I put in a 2 in here, okay, a positive 2, I get 2 squared. 4 minus 4 is 0. 
That's a no-no. And same thing for negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4, 0. So, here I would say that my domain is going to be all real numbers such that they are not positive 2 and also not negative 2. What about here? When you have a square root, you cannot have negative numbers in here. So, kind of like how we have to work out when this was 0, whenever you have a square root, you want to work it out so that this number stays positive. To do that, this is what we'll do. You want to say, I want to make sure that this is going to be positive. Things that are positive are greater than or equal to 0. So now we just solve for t here. Minus 4, minus 4, negative 3t is greater than or equal to negative 4, divide by negative 3, and t is, remember, switch your sign when you divide by negative, is less than or equal to 4 thirds. So, this domain, you'll say that it's a t such that my t is less than or equal to 4 thirds. Okay, so let's look at the three different scenarios. All real numbers. Here you have everything except these two, so you have a little gap. And here I'm restricted to choosing t's that are all less than or equal to 4 thirds. All right, your turn. All right, go ahead and find the domain of these three functions. Pause the video, and I'll show you the answers in three, two, one. All right, here are your answers. I hope you got them right. All right, now, if they give you a graph, and they're asking you, hey, is this a function? Then there's something that you can do real quickly. You can do what's called a vertical line test. A vertical line test, usually I'll just hold my pencil and I'll scoot it over and I'll see how many times the graph hits the pencil. In this case where y is equal to x squared, notice that it, wherever I put it, it will only hit the pencil one time. If it only hits it one time, one time only, then you can say that this is a function. Okay, likewise, when I have y is equal to x cubed, wherever I put it, no matter what, this is also a function. Let's look at these two. Notice that if I put the pencil here, well, my marker, I'm going to hit it twice, okay, here and here, or wherever else I put it. What happens is that this distance, let's say the distance is 1, the coordinate of this point would be 1 whatever, and the coordinate of this one would be 1, let's say, negative y. Notice what happens here. Who is repeating? my x-coordinate, and I can't have that in functions, so we say that this is not a function, it failed the vertical line test. Okay, no matter where I put it, there's only one spot we'll, where it'll hit it once, but you, which is here, okay, at the vertex, and it would be tangent, but you have to check the rest of the graph also. Okay, same thing with the circle. If I just checked right here at the very edge, I would only hit it once, but scooting it over just a little bit more, I noticed that I hit it here and here and anywhere else I hit it. So notice that this point would be 0, uh, actually 1, 0, 1, and this point would be 0, negative 1. Okay, once again, my x coordinate is repeating, so we say that circles are not functions. Nice and easy, right? All right, that's it for today. Until next time.